Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. And today I'm reacting to Matt Donnelly, a comedian magician on Penn and Teller's Fool Us. And apparently Matt co-hosts a podcast with Penn, so they must already be good friends. By the way, have any of you seen Penn's podcast? It's called Sunday School and I just haven't had a chance to check it out yet. I'm very curious about that. Is it good? Is it worth watching? I mean, listening to? And make sure to stick around till after the reaction because then I'll share a pearl of wisdom with you in the form of an Aesop's fable, as is my habit. That being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Hey, I'm Matt Donnelly, and I have no business being a professional magician. I uh, started as an improviser, improv comedy. I moved to Las Vegas, and as luck would have it, became friends with Penn. So I co-host Penn's podcast, and I've been doing that for about six years. I got into magic on a dare. I kind of was mouthing off and saying, like, I should just learn a trick. And Penn said, you're right, you should. I basically went to every working magician I knew and asked them if they'd teach me one trick. I started combining my comedy with my magic, and it took off quickly. Ta-da! You do know they do this for a living, right? I think it's hilarious to go on Foolless and mess with my friends. Do I expect them to be really surprised? Absolutely. The mind needler. Joined by a randomly selected member of our audience, here's Matt Donnelly, the mind noodler. Hello, I'm Matt Donnelly. I am a mind noodler, which is not a mind reader. It's like a mind reader plus, okay? <laughs> First step of being a mind noodler is reading minds. That's easy, right? What's your name? Morgan. Morgan, I knew that. I read your mind, no problem. And right over there, I can read Penn's mind. He's thinking, what the hell's Matt doing up there? <laughs> I can read Teller's mind. He's thinking, Awkward. Actually, Morgan, Teller's thinking he hates that joke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but we're going to experiment with some mind noodling. Are you a fan of Penn and Teller, Morgan? Yes. So am I. So before we get this experiment started with mind noodling, I want to see if we can get a picture with Penn and Teller, okay? Okay. All right, come on up here. All right, Morgan, switch places with me here. We're going to take a selfie right here and mark this wonderful occasion. All right, here we go. Let me get, I get in there. And... Beautiful. Now we're going to get to mind noodling, okay? Step one of mind noodling is reading your mind. Step two is the noodling part. Do you know what noodling is? No. Regular noodling is the kind of fishing where you find a wide mouth fish and you don't use a pole, you just shove your whole arm into that fish's mouth and yank that muddy puppy out of the water. He stays on your arm and it's yours. Morgan, that's what I'm going to do to your mind. Oh. Okay? Okay. I'm going to take my own thought and with my mental arm, shove it into your cat mouth fish brain. <laughs> okay? That sounds terrible. I mean, assuming that's actually a real thing with fish where you shove your hand down their mouth, that just sounds grotesque and horrible. <laughs> Let me just Google that real quick. Okay, yes, after my extensive research on Google, that is a real thing, and it's just as he described it. So, uh, hey, that's uh, something new we learned now. Okay, after I can kind of get past how uh, terrible that concept is, if I just apply it to this act and magic, yeah, that's pretty funny because <laughs> it sounds like he's really going to invade her mind there, and it's kind of an awkward, funny moment. Let's go ahead. All right, All right. so what you're going to do is you're going to try to think of something, and you're going to think you thought it, but in fact, I thought it, and I put that thought in your brain. Okay. Okay? All right. Great. Take a look at Teller. I want you to think about how much he weighs. Now, Morgan, I realize I'm putting you on the spot here. I should let you take more of an educated guess. Teller has two pairs of cheeks. Go ahead and grab one of his cheeks. <laughs> nope. 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 Morgan. No. His butt, Morgan. Grab his butt. <laughs> she doesn't want seriously? to. Yes, seriously. <laughs> Seems like she did the least she possibly could. Morgan, you should now have a pretty good idea of what Teller weighs. All right? But I... <laughs> I know you do, because I put that thought in your mind. I don't want you to say it out loud. Okay. Because that'd be that'd be offensive to tell her to, to to guess his weight out loud to everybody here in this audience. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have a calculator on your phone. Yeah. 
Yes. Open it up. Okay, and what I want you to do is just go right to the numbers and type in what you think he weighs. I don't want to look. <laughs> just type it in. It's in. Okay. Yes. Mind reading, success. Noodling, way off. I was off by 16 pounds on that guess, but I'll document for science. Minus 16. For science. There we go. All right, Morgan, you and I are going to do better in round two, okay? Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to take a look at Penn. Uh-oh. Are you going to make me grab his butt cheek? I'm going to make you do even more than that, Morgan. <laughs> Just go ahead and give Penn a bear hug. Grab him and lift him up. Lift him up! Get that magical Yeti in the sky. Go! <laughs> I don't think I can... I think you can try harder. <laughs> Okay, Morgan, you have a pretty good idea of what you think Penn weighs? Yes. Okay, just hit the plus sign. Okay. And I don't want to look. Go ahead and enter it into the calculator. It's in. Okay, yeah. Whoo! Morgan, mind reading success, and we're getting much closer on the noodling. I was only seven pounds away from that last guess. You think you guessed Penn's weight, but your guess was influenced by my noodling. <laughs> and I think we're going to nail it on round three. Are you excited for round three? Yes. I'm excited for round three. You want to know why, Morgan? Round three is B. Okay? Okay. I've let you pinch teller. I've let you squeeze pen. Now, your choice, free choice. Do you want to ride me like a pony, or do you want me to ride you like a pony? <laughs> You'll ride me like a pony? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Smart choice, Morgan. I am an amazing pony. Do I actually... <laughs> Come on, Morgan. Morgan. Okay. Morgan. Great job. Okay. Although I think it would have been better if she straddled him like riding a normal horse. She was riding him like a lady with her feet to the side. Although I suppose that was a safe call on national television. Anyway, let's proceed. Now you should have a pretty good idea of what I weigh now, yes? Yes. Okay, Morgan. I'm not good with weight. Okay. <laughs> Morgan, remember, hopefully I'm mind noodling. So whether you're good with weight or not, doesn't matter. Because I put a thought in your brain. Okay. Go ahead. Two... Go on. Two... Fifteen? Two fifteen. <laughs> Two hundred and fifteen pounds. Do you all think Morgan came up with that figure on her own? Do you think, Morgan, that all of America's watching, looking at this frame and thinking, I weigh 215 pounds? No, Morgan, we nailed it. It's a full noodle. Okay. Oh, Morgan, listen, I had faith in you. I had more faith in you than you could possibly imagine. I have a prediction that I put in place before this whole thing began. All right? Okay. And I sealed it on my flesh. I want you to hit the equals button on your calculator. Okay. And now, out loud, I want you to say that guess for everyone to hear. 580? Boom! What? <laughs> What'd you say? 580. 580? Okay. Oh, wait, Morgan! We didn't noodle all the way, right? We had some changes on here, right? Okay. So I had minus 16, I had minus 7. That would give me a total of uh, minus... 23, and I think 603 minus 23 gives me a total of 580. <laughs> Penn, tell her, this trick is completely examinable. <laughs> nope. Uh, <laughs> that's your, yeah, okay. Put yourself What's together. What's going on? I uh, come here. You know how it works. Oh yes, I do. All right.
Okay, before we here at Penn and Teller have to say, I'll give you my thoughts. So this is a mostly comedy act, partially magic. And I have to say, it was really funny. It had me laughing. Although, it kind of bordered on awkward a lot of the time. And on the one hand, I was feeling a little bit bad for that girl volunteer. But on the other hand, I don't know, maybe, she, maybe it was funny for her. Maybe she enjoyed it. It was a little hard for me to tell if she was extremely uncomfortable or just kind of giggling and going along with it. Actually, I think if you'd gotten a different volunteer from the audience who was more just into it and just having fun with everything, it might have been more relaxing and more easy to focus on the magic and the comedy. But yeah, I gotta say, it's a little strange to ask a woman in front of the whole audience to grab another man's butt. That might be crossing some kind of line. And as far as the magic effect, well, he had the number taped on his belly under his shirt, so obviously he had to know that ahead of time, so he had to somehow force that option, that number. And in this case, I feel like I don't have enough information to work with to really know how he did it. It was probably some pre-show work involving the calculator app on her phone, I'm guessing. But again, I guess the focus here really wasn't about the magic or about fooling Penn and Teller. I think it's more just about having fun and yeah, period, just having fun. Anyway, let's go ahead and hear what Penn and Teller have to say about that. So what's it like performing for your friends Penn and Teller? You know, I started magic basically on a dare by Penn and so put a preview together of my first magic show and so I can tell you, don't do your first magic show ever in front of Penn and Teller. <laughs> Teller taught me a rope trick with a knife. I cut my finger open, I bled all over myself, and it did not go well at all. I'm very happy to, be, to get back here and at least do something pretty, pretty good in front of them. All right, let's see if your friends Penn and Teller figured it out. All right. All right, Penn, Teller, this guy. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Matt Donnelly is my co-host on Penn Sunday School. We do a podcast together. That's true every single week and yet he has been keeping this from me for months that he's showing up on this show oh i'm learning magic i'm working on a few new things pen i hope you get to see him someday <laughs> won't that be fun what tricks you working on matt oh you know just stuff <laughs> so you come here wow. after co-hosting my show for what seven years and you've got a trick you're trying to sneak by me I'll tell you, Matt, it's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing because you've really done a beautiful performance that absolutely killed. I've got to tell you, it's astonishing in every single way, but you thinking you can fool us, you rat bastard? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a great trick, but it didn't add up. And if you think you fooled us, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> no, it does not add up. You did not fool us. Isn't that right, Matt? Uh, it's true. <laughs> Busted. Busted. Right. But it was my lifelong dream to perform for you guys. That's not true either. I... <laughs> Cause... Cause I just started a year ago. <laughs> but it was my lifelong dream to be ridden like a pony on national TV. <laughs> so, so I thank you. Sad. I thank you, I thank you. <laughs> All right, now for my final thoughts. Yeah, I really kind of wish he had gotten a volunteer that had ridden him like normal on a horse instead of side saddle. That would have been much more funny because then he could really go all around on the stage like a pony. But beggars can't be choosers. Secondly, I think the code talk that Penn was doing was about it doesn't add up. So I was thinking about those numbers adding up and not sure what that means. <laughs> but one thing I will say to his credit that he did well is that, yeah, he's got like a prediction at the end. And sometimes it can be too obvious in our mind to just be like, well, he had it written down, so obviously he had to force her to choose that. One thing he did to obfuscate that concept was having this like minus 17, minus six. That really kind of added another element that made it more confusing in your mind, or at least in my mind. And I thought that that was a great presentational element. Kind of makes you forget about the details, makes it seem more random, it makes it seem a little bit more a blah 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 a little bit more magical so i like the way he constructed that anyway overall seemed like a great performance was really fun hopefully that girl wasn't too uncomfortable with what he asked her to do and i'm gonna have to check out that podcast pin sunday school now i'm even more curious about it all right now it's time for the aesop's fables reading story time edition thingy and this time i've not randomly selected a story i picked one that's really long normally i go for the short ones but this one as you can see is more than a page. Now that's some kind of story. Chapter 127 for those of you following along at home. The Clown and the Countryman. 
A nobleman announced his intention of giving a public entertainment in the theater and offered splendid prizes to all who had any novelty to exhibit at the performance. The announcement attracted a crowd of conjurers, jugglers, and acrobats, and among the rest, a clown, very popular with the crowd, who let it be known that he was going to give an entirely new turn. When the day of the performance came, the theater was filled from top to bottom some time before the entertainment began. Several performers exhibited their tricks, and then the popular favorite came on empty-handed and alone. At once, there was a hush of expectation, and he, letting his head fall upon his breast, imitated the squeak of a pig to such perfection that the audience insisted on his producing the animal, which, they said, he must have somewhere concealed about his person. He, however, convinced them that there was no pig there, and then the applause was deafening. So far, so good. Among the spectators was a countryman who disparaged the clown's performance and announced that he would give a much superior exhibition of the same trick on the following day. Again, the theater was filled to overflowing, and again the clown gave his imitation amidst the cheers of the crowd. The countryman, meanwhile, before going on the stage, had secreted a young porker under his schmuck, and when the spectators derisively bade him to do better if he could, he gave it a pinch in the ear and made it squeal loudly. But they all with one voice shouted out that the clown's imitation was much more true to life. Thereupon he produced the pig from under his smock and said sarcastically, There, that shows what sort of judges you are. Pig drop. Man, sounds like that countryman really burned them good. I bet that was all over the press in the time period of when that was. Interesting. I've, I've never read such a long story from this book. That was, uh, that was kind of fun with all the details. I really felt like I was getting drawn into the story. But there must still be some piece of wisdom buried in here for us to absorb and interpret for our daily lives. And what could that be? Hmm. I mean, hmm. Geez, I don't really know. I'm having a hard time thinking about this one. Like, I understand the concept that they thought the uh, fake imitation was more real than the real thing, and they were wrong. But what's the lesson to be learned there? Never doubt a countryman when he's talking about pigs. Hmm, I'm feeling really dense right now. Okay, something about imitation. How we can view imitations as being more real than the real thing. I don't know, I guess the crowd just liked the clown better because he was displaying a talent, which is to impersonate an animal. Whereas the countryman, he just had a real pig there. Yeah, he proved them wrong, but still, he's kind of a jerk and spoil sport. Was the whole point to see who could more accurately portray the sound of a pig? Or just for entertainment? I mean, they're on stage there in a big theater. I don't know. Please help me out in the comments below. Leave a comment if you have some concept of how to interpret the story, or this longer one. Is this more just about having fun reading a story? Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe, click like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Yep. Yep.